just want to pick up if there's any other uh, reflections on letting go of music or finishing music from a- a Adam or James and that idea or that challenge in that creative process. It's probably the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Mm. It's never done. Even when it's released, it's not done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you have to, it's to the point like one of the main labels that I work with now, um, he's not a music producer. So you could send him version one and he's like, yes, yeah, I'll release it. And then you're like, well, no, 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 I need to do some work. And then you send it to other people and they can't hear the changes that you've made. You know, when you send it to other artists and you're like, no, no, but I tweet this, like, this the bass line's down by like 0.5 dB and it's like really like let the snare breathe. And you're like, no one can hear that. It's just you. And it, it becomes a point where it's like, am I just changing things because I'm looking at this? Like, it, and, and I just end up listening to music away from the screen, um, even if it's in the studio just because you're there locking into how it sounds, making notes as I go along, and hopefully the list of notes gets smaller. And if I am just like, oh, I can, you know, take that one hi-hat out or change that by like half a dB, then I know that I'm pretty much in the ballpark of this is done. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's never done. Mm. I'd love to go back on all my old tunes and fix them, but yeah. I can't. They're, they're cemented in history, and that's part of the learning curve as well as an artist yeah. and a and a you know, as, as the skill as a music producer. Yeah, so noticing when your adjustments are getting smaller and smaller or the, the list of things that you might change about a, so, about a song decreases yeah. is an indicator to you that, hey, this song's almost almost yeah. finished. If you're like, oh, that, that fill on that turnaround doesn't work, then there's obviously work that needs to be done. But if it's like, oh, yeah, does that, does that crash ring a little bit too long? Or, you know, stuff that just no one's ever going to hear apart from you because you've like slaved over mm. it for hours. Um, that's yeah they're kind of like key factors of when the music's done yeah yeah and Adam Adam or Chris as well anything to add yeah totally agree with that Um, there's so many tracks that I'd love to go back on and change minor things that I can hear but something I like doing is uh, bouncing exporting it and just having it like I'll put it in my headphones whilst I'm going for a run or something driving around in the car um, listen to it out of the studio um just getting my head away from that sort of like controlled environment seems to tune me into what it is I really want to change about something. I mean, usually when I'm sat in front of the screen, the screen seems to be a quite a big thing in that. Mm. And I'm looking at the project, I'm like, what is it? It's something in there, it's maybe that, it's maybe that. And then as soon as I take it away from that, I just, I'm able to identify it so much quicker. Yeah, it simplifies it, doesn't it? Definitely. And just picking up something else you said earlier, it was about knowing when to kill a track is a really big, important skill. Because kill. sometimes, yeah. yeah, like, no, no, as in, like, put it to bed and never yeah, touch yeah, it yeah. and burn it and throw the hard disk away. Uh, no, just because, you know, you can waste an inordinate amount of time. And finishing tracks, like we're talking about, these minor adjustments can drag on and become a really time intensive process. Mm. And, and it's not always the best use of your time. So you have to know when to let go of something to release it. But also, if something's, you're, you're spending hours and hours and it's not going anywhere. Just being able to say, you know what, I'm just going to put that away, like say, harvest it for bits. You know, there's often something something that was good about it. Maybe yeah. the beat was good, or there was a good sound in it. Harvest it, but otherwise bin it off and, and move on to other things that you're mm. enjoying more. And I think having that enjoyment is a big part of it. When you stop enjoying it because mm. you're tweaking too much, or you, you can't see how to finish it, it's best just to move on and try and find something that inspires you and you find fun ultimately yeah it relieves like mental weight as well it's yeah, like definitely. cleaning loads of like old stuff out of your house and be like all right i've got rid of it i wasn't using it i haven't worn that piece of clothing for six months or something it's the same you don't want to be burdened by when you open up your projects you're like oh, remember that song and that song it's like no just just get rid of it this is what i need to focus on mm. And using this metaphor of um, getting rid of clothes made me go to charity shops and maybe the equivalent would be you know giving a song that you had half written to, um, to to the public, like, hey, I half wrote this song, does anyone want to take it and make it something? Or like donating stems to a friend or something, hey, I can't make this work. Does that ever happen? Yeah, it can, yeah. If, you're, if you're stuck but you know something is there, it could be a great track for a collaboration. Mm. So send it to an artist that you think would work well on it. Mm. Um, that's always good. But sometimes you're like, I know I can finish this and this is my work. Mm. Um, but it just never happens. But yeah, there's ob- there's obvious ones that you get where you're like, this would be great for a collab or there's something here, you know, the, the crux of the track is there. But yeah, other times it's just like, I want to finish this, but yeah. I don't know how. And, yeah. it's, and it's my thing, but I'm just going to yeah. keep the parts. Wicked.